Hey everyone, this is Three Questions with Dr. Chris Jones. There we go. I haven't done this in a while, Chris. I've been pumped. All right. Uh, Dr. Jones, who basically, Dr. Jones, Harrison Ford, Indiana Jones here. That's kind of like when I say Dr. Jones, that's all I think about is Indiana Jones movies, right? So it's been, it's been great talking to you before the podcast. I'm, I'm pumped to uh, have you talk a little bit about your experience, some of your focus on really kind of empowering teachers. Uh, and when we were talking before the podcast, I, I loved your, we were talking about that idea. You, well, you were talking about the idea of teacher centered and how important that is. And so we're going to talk about that more in our long podcast coming up. But when you think about a teacher that has inspired you, you know, whether it's a student, whether it's a colleague, who's somebody you think of and why? Um, that's a great question. And first, thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. Yeah, my pleasure. Um, one of the one of the teachers that inspired me was a high school teacher I had, Thomas Maloney, uh, Mr. Maloney. He was absolutely fantastic. He was a guy that didn't always strictly go by the rules. He was um, set on making sure that we had fun, but that we also learned and stayed in line. And uh, the interesting thing is, is he got me into martial arts during my high school years. <laughs> That's um, not where I was expecting that to go. But, but, but um, I like that. I like oh, that. I like oh that. stick with me. I'll bring you a lot of places you didn't expect to go. <laughs> but, um, he, uh, he got me, he got me interested in martial arts and got me started taking martial arts because he was actually the instructor that ran it at school. Um, and I, I stayed, I stayed in touch with him. I stayed in touch with him, but he helped me with some papers when I went away to college. He was always there that whenever I needed something, um, he was more than willing to support me. Um, so he's probably, he got me into, here's another one for you. He got me into our singing and dancing group at the high school, the Pentangle players. Right. And so I actually did musicals and things like that as the football player and wrestler. Um, so it was, it was good. He did. I guess the thing that was inspiring about him is he had the bigger picture in mind. He wanted to make sure that we were doing things that kept us invested in going to school and mm -hmm. kept us invested in the idea of learning and getting better. So instead of just, you know, it being the daily grind. Well, and we, we talked about that too before. It really kind of like great teachers instill that love of learning for you outside of school, right? And so like when you connect on some of those other aspects of life, um, I think they're really important. I was I was really, I was really, I'm not going to lie to you. I was hoping that you're going to say like, and then doctor, you know, uh, you know, Thomas Maloney, I got attacked in the bathroom at my high school dance. And then they, they, these guys, we said, let's not fight here. Let's do it at a tournament. And then basically yeah. you were the basis of the it, karate kid. That's what it I was, was Maloney, I was not Miyagi. <laughs> All right. Very close. <laughs> Very close. So I was kind of just hoping for that. And then, you know, you became friends and now you have like a dojo together in Cobra Kai. Have you, have you watched that? I know this has nothing I, to do with anything. <laughs> have you not seen, have you seen Cobra Kai? I have tried. I, I tried. See, because as, as a child of that, I had to show my boys, the karate kids. And so then we, then Cobra Kai came out. We were like, oh, we got to watch Cobra Kai. I watched like three of them and it was, no, it was not, a, it was I, not good. We I'm walked away. You. Give it, give it another chance. It is amazing. <laughs> it is so good. I actually cannot believe um, the. <laughs> yeah, this, I, you're right. I didn't know where this was going. The, the when you actually think when the I can't remember. It's is it Johnny the the Johnny's a bad guy yep. in the Karate Kid, right? Yeah, he is probably one of my favorite characters. Johnny in Cobra Kai is hilarious because he's like kind of like he wants to be good, but he does like kind of bad stuff, and he's just hilarious. So. I'm telling uh, you, right. maybe, over, maybe over, I'll give it another try. <laughs> all right. Well, that, I didn't, that's not where I expected that story to go. I was expecting, <laughs> you know, more of a karate kid story, but yeah, that's doc or Thomas Baloney special yep. button. Big shout out. I love it. Okay. So he definitely um, deserves it. I love it. So when you think about an administrator, you know, in your experience and, you know, currently you are uh, a principal and, you know, that's a, obviously very hard time to be a principal, right? Hard time to be in education in general, right? Yeah. So when you think about your experiences with all the administrators who you've interacted with, either as a student, you know, staff member, who do you kind of think of and why? Um, this is a little, this is a little tougher one because I don't, I don't really have an administrator that stands out to me that, that has like inspired me or, or, yeah. or made me, 
made me think. And but, um, you know, there's I, there's one other name that comes to mind because he had so much involvement in in my development and a lot of what I hold dear as values today. Um, but he he was another teacher and a coach that I had, mm-hmm. um, and his name was Coach Ryan, who I actually invited to my wedding. Um, his name was Thomas Ryan. So maybe maybe it's something about Thomas. Um, the name Thomas, but, uh, you know, I saw him lead in so many ways on, um, on the field, in the classroom, in the school in general, um, with values and some of the values that he instilled. I, I still kind of lean on some of those today, but as far as administrators, I, I find it difficult, um, to think up an administrator, like a principal or assistant principal that I ran into, Mm -hmm. um, that I saw if I were, if I were to think, of one, it's one that that hasn't even that I've never worked with. I have kind of in a in a in a roundabout way, but that would be um, Brian McCann from Case High School. Um, he just does a real bang up job. He's been at his high school since he went there, um, and he how just you know, how do you know Brian? that name's familiar? I know a Brian McCann on Twitter. I don't know if it's the same person. It's the same one. Actually, his Twitter his Twitter handle he laughs about because when he first got on Twitter, he was panicking trying to type it in, and he's yeah. Case High Prince. Okay, on yeah, Twitter yeah, because he ran out of characters, and so <laughs> since then he's been known as Case High Prince. Um, but he's so I know him. I I was actually the principal of the school in the district next to his. And Mm -hmm. so we were in the same league. So we met all the time and um, we're in the same state organization. So we talk a lot that way, but, you know, through conferences and stuff where we've hung out, he's just a really good example of um, an administrator that, that, you know, lives his passion, really does what he thinks is right. Even if it's against the grain Mm -hmm. um, instead of always kind of stepping in. Yeah. Like when you're, when you're talking about this, cause we kind of, you know, we talked a little bit before we started recording about, you know, that you might not be able to kind of think of someone. I think mm-hmm. that unfortunately is an experience for a lot of educators is that they don't necessarily have a principle that, you know, and I, I think sometimes we kind of get maybe lost in the politics, lost in the, um, you know, the minutia of the day-to-day stuff. And we kind of lose our, our, our vision. And I remember actually, having a conversation with a friend of mine, he's basically said he like posted about um, how schools don't actually need principals. And I, and this is when I was a principal. I'm like, that, that is a ridiculous thing to say. And I said, the reason you're writing that is because you've never had a good principal. If you had a good principal, you wouldn't write that. He's like, no, I don't agree. And then two years later, he got a really good principal. He's like, I, I kind of changed my mind. Right. Cause like <laughs> you can see there, there is an impact right there too. And I think, um, the same things that we hope for, you know, our kids in classrooms, we should hope for the adults, you know, in their work environments that they have that person that has their back that, you know, helps them grow, you know, sees potential in them and, you know, really kind of makes them better. I think, I think one of the kind of the opposite ends of that is when we hear, when I hear a teacher say, I'm like, you know, what's so great about your principal? And they'll say like, oh, they just let me do whatever I want. They just stay out of my way. I'm like, nah, that's not a good principal. Cause I, cause I'm thinking like, you know, there's, there's, we, of course we want autonomy in our work that we do, but does that, that doesn't make you any better, right? Like, does that, there's not, there's no mentorship. There's no growth in that process. And imagine a kid, like if I said, Hey, what is what's so great about your teacher? Oh, they just stay out of my way. And let me do whatever I want. You'd be like, oh, that's that's like that's that would that's be not good, yeah. right? So um, the one thing I do really appreciate, and I think I, I kind of like maybe I need to add a question here at some point in this podcast is how much our coaches have made an impact on us. Like I think of my high school score. I actually think of my elementary school coaches who had an impact on me, and uh, mm-hmm. a lot of those lessons that I you know kind of share about life about learning leadership i actually didn't learn from college i didn't learn from you know some class i learned from my you know coaches the really importance of leadership and you know and uh some some great conversations there so i'm gonna do a special shout out to all the coaches out there especially in canada because it's all volunteer just so you know oh really it's all i didn't realize that shout out to all the coaches out there okay i um why you're I, I, no, that's fine. I I love that sound effect. One of the things that, <laughs> you know, when you give when you give a, when you give a shout out to all those coaches out there, I mean, if we talk about education being 
the way we want it to be, right? Where right. it's continuous improvement. It's focusing on where you are and getting better from where you are. Right. Um, and skill development. Uh, I mean, teaching is coaching. If, oh, if we oh, think totally. about it. I, so um, definitely a, a shout out to the coaches. And I, I, I think about how many times I look at good teachers or interact with good teachers and those good teachers are doing the same thing right. that coaches do in the classroom. So, well, so here's actually the analogy based on that, right? So uh, I remember listening, I was at some clinic or something like that. And uh, they were talking about, so I like, I'm really into basketball. And uh, they were talking about this kid who missed a free throw. And the coach said, hey, like, don't miss. And the kid's like, do you think I wanted to miss? <laughs> right. Right. And so, and so the, the good advice is like, hey, you know, you're tired, bend your knees a little bit more on your shot, you know, square up, like give some actual advice. And it'll be like kind of like a teacher just saying, that's wrong. Like, well, I'm not intending to get it wrong. Right. So like, where, where's the teaching? Right. And I kind of, kind of think about that process. So yeah, like I, that has always stuck with me kind of thinking about that process of like, do we, do we think people want to go out and fail and do things wrong? Or like, how do you actually help them to find success? And I think, you know, great coaches and teachers, as you said, you know, kind of have that, uh, in, 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 uh, you know, in connection with one another. And so that beautifully leads into the last question. So when you think about your career, and I know uh, we'll talk more about this in other podcasts, uh, just kind of thinking about how you went from, uh, you know, one profession into education. And so now you are currently a principal and I know you want to be the principal, maybe that you never had. Uh, and so you look back at your own career what like what advice would you give to yourself as a first year teacher? If you could look back and talk to yourself at that point, what would you what would you tell yourself? Um, there's so much advice I'd give to my first year. <laughs> right. Self. Right. <laughs> right. There's so much coaching I'd give to my first year. Right. Self. Right. Um, I would have to say, no matter what, because you run into all kinds of issues. You run into being busy, being buried, late last minute planning. I would say no matter what, just hang on to why you got into teaching. And I know that sounds a little cliche, um, but know why you're doing what you're doing. And if you stick to that and trust the process of doing what you're supposed to be doing as far as getting to the students and things like that, um, I think you're going to be okay. Because if if you got into teaching um, for the reason of helping students, well, that, that requires a, a certain amount of empathy. And a certain amount of understanding for individual students and where they're coming from and where they've been. Mm -hmm. um, and if you if you live that and you you lean into that reasoning, then it doesn't matter really if they fail the test, you're better at picking them up. If mm -hmm. you have to get a certain concept across to them that's difficult, um, you're not necessarily worried about jamming it into the day that you have to do that. Um, you make it more personalized for students. And what falls from there is if, if you're being empathetic, if you're leaning into the idea that you want kids to improve and have a good experience, mm -hmm. then assessment follows. Mm -hmm. And then you're assessing learning rather than making sure you're checking boxes and that they're doing the percentage thing right and, and all that. So I think it all falls into place if you really lean into why you decided to become a teacher. And hopefully yeah, I, it's for good reasons, right? Right. right. And <laughs> I, I think when, when you look at, like I, one of the distinctions, I always say this is that there's a very big difference between assessment and grading, right? Like yeah. grading, like that, the assessment is really powerful. Grading is kind of, you know, finite or final and, and really More kind punitive. of, yeah. And kind of thinking about that process. And so when you're, when, when you're talking about this and we we're thinking about, the, I was like thinking like, maybe I need to, to like reframe that question and say like, Hey, what's the, first thing in mind that you would say to yourself as a first year teacher, because like all of us in education, there's probably about a hundred things we would have fixed, you know, minimum, you know, that when we first started teaching the things that we learned through that process, you know, uh, but I actually, I don't think it's, I don't think it's cliche that you, you say that because I think a lot of people, what they're struggling with right now is, is why they're in education because a lot of the issues that we seem to be facing in the education world um, are people saying like, this is, this is not why, this is not why I became a teacher. This was not mm -hmm. the hope and what I'm doing and what I hope to do don't match. And, and I think part of our job as administrators is, um, is to get rid of as much of that other stuff so they can do 
what they were meant to do, if that makes sense, right? And I think that's no, one to talk about. Absolutely. Yeah, you, you have to you have to clear clear the way for them to do what they what they got in to do because there is a lot of minutia they can get in the way. There's a lot of politics. There's a lot of garbage, and mm-hmm. and I definitely think the experience that I've had with administrators when I was a teacher and mm-hmm. with other administrators as I moved up through administration is why I'm the way I am and interested in supporting teachers. Because if I'm if I'm not clearing the way for them, then mm-hmm they're they're more bogged down in all those little things that pull them away from why they got into teaching in the first place so they can't be as effective and this is a beautiful teaser to our longer podcast where we're going to talk about this notion of teacher centered and and your focus on that so uh dr jones chris thank you so much for being on the podcast everyone thank you for listening i hope you have a wonderful day here we go man crushed it That was good. You're great to talk to. Thanks, bro.